The best way to explain how this whole complex economic crisis began is to start off with a very simple concept. And this concept is a pool. A pool of money. Okay, so I'm not talking about an actual pool filled with money. Instead, what I'm referring to is a term that I learned from NPR and Chicago Public Radio. It's called the giant pool of money. So what this refers to is an international pool of money saved by corporations and organizations who were looking for a safe and secure place to put their investments. So now the question becomes, who made up this giant pool of money? Well, it was a variety of individuals and organizations who were looking to do something with their assets. These included states, retired people, mutual funds, and insurance companies and banks. And what they did was that they gave their money to investors in the form of funds. But what exactly is a fund? Funds are collections of assets, such as cash, bonds, and other financial products that are invested on behalf of a larger company, organization, government entity, or group of people. Examples include what are called sovereign funds, which are a collection of assets collected by the state, pension funds, which are assets used to pay employees' retirement, mutual funds, which are a general pool of money that is invested on behalf of a group of investors, and insurance funds, which are invested by insurance companies as a means of paying for catastrophes. Putting all these funds together, we get the giant pool of money. So the giant pool of money goes to a type of bank called an investment bank. And they tell this bank that they want a type of investment with two prominent characteristics, low risk, but decent return. Well, there was a specific type of investment that satisfied that need, and it was called a fixed income security. These are types of investment that are guaranteed to produce a fixed amount of return over a given period of time. An example of such a product would be a U.S. Treasury bill. Let's take the example of a bill that will mature to $1,000. That means that it will take a given period of time, let's say 10 years, to mature to a value of $1,000. In the meantime, when it's worth less, let's say 950, someone might buy that bond for $950. Then when the bond matures to the full value of 1,000, the person receives the full 950 he originally paid and makes a $50 profit in interest. Since he made $50 out of 1,000, he has what is called a 5% return. So let's assume that the investors bought treasury bills for all of their clients. What would happen is that over a period of, let's say, 10 years, all of their clients' money would have a 5% return. So these treasury bills were generally considered a very good investment because they were safe, secure, and they produced decent returns. Not high, but you have to remember, the risk was low. What went wrong? Well. Over the past 10 years, the giant pool of money doubled in size. This doubling in size was attributed to a variety of factors, but most prominently the rise in income of developing regions of the world, particularly in Asia and the Middle East. Over the past decade, these regions experienced significant economic growth, and this translated to more savers. These newfound earners with their increased income would subsequently add their savings to the giant pool of money, thereby causing it to double. But while the giant pool of money had grown to twice its size, this did not correspond to a growth in the number of investments. The number of U.S. Treasury bills issued was still limited. The result was that the giant pool of money was scrambling to find other investment products with similar characteristics. Furthermore, the bursting of the dot-com bubble on September 11th brought about the 2001 recession. To prevent the economy from going under, Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan dropped interest rates to an all-time low of 1%. Thus, Treasury bills and similar investment products were no longer seen as attractive investments for people in the giant pool of money. So investors then asked themselves, if Treasury bills were limited and interest rates were low, what could they use for investment products? And that's when a new market emerged on the horizon, a market with investment products that were so good 
that they could potentially produce a return of 6%, and that market was the housing market. This market, in which investors bought up securitized mortgages, offered them something that they really wanted, good return and plentiful investments, and so they started moving away from T-bills towards mortgages. But how exactly do you turn a house into an investment product? Well, I'll be explaining that in my upcoming podcast, How Mortgages Work. To review, we learned what the giant pool of money is, who makes it up, how it grew in size, and how investors shifted to a market of mortgages that were converted into investments due to the fact that there were not enough safe and secure fixed income securities and that these fixed income securities had low interest rates. Coming up, we will learn how the mortgage market works and how it relates to the giant pool of money. Thanks for watching. To learn more or watch more podcasts, visit www.subprimethemusical.wordpress.com